the Roaring Twenties, a time of major cultural and social shifts in this country. America was fresh out of the First World War and was experiencing a drastic economic boom while consumer culture was on a steady rise. More and more people were leaving their farms for the big, lively cities up north. And as class mobility and moving up the social hierarchy became easier for the most part, Americans were feeling optimistic. Soon, the modern concept of the American dream was born. The American dream was the idea that people from all walks of life, no matter who they were or where they came from, could become successful and elite members of society through hard work and determination. However, this idealistic view of our country wasn't all true for minorities during this time, African Americans in particular. No matter the amount of hard work they put in, the chances of them becoming successful was fairly small. And even with their successes and triumphs, they were still viewed with little regard by a majority of the white public in comparison to their white counterparts in their respective fields. African Americans, long realizing their inability to achieve the classical American dream without compromising some aspect of their identities, created their own version. African Americans from all over the South flocked to northern cities after slavery in search of better economic opportunities, social conditions, and an overall better life. This was known as the Great Migration. From this migration came the Harlem Renaissance. The Harlem Renaissance was a time of great cultural, intellectual, and political revival for the Black community centered in the city of Harlem, New York, beginning in the late 1910s and early 20s. The Harlem Renaissance was not a renewal of the American dream, but a redefinition. Black people were able to thrive in their own spaces like the Cotton Club, succeeding in the humanities, which includes art, dance, literature, and music, in addition to politics and social justice matters. Eventually, the revolutionary art they created, heavily based on religion, the slavery era, traditional African culture, and the culture African Americans here made for themselves, seeped into the mainstream media and greatly impacted a lot of white artists themselves. One prominent artist during this time was Lois Milu Jones. Jones was born in Boston, Massachusetts in 1905. After graduating from the High School of Practical Arts in Boston and attending the School of the Museum of Fine Arts in 1923, Jones decided to apply for a teaching position there after she graduated. She was promptly denied, being told that she should, quote, go south to help her people by the white director. Jones was originally against the idea, but ended up embracing it after going to a lecture by prominent black educator Charlotte Hawkins Brown. Jones spearheaded the petition for the addition of an art department at Brown School that she founded, Palmer Memorial Institute, which was a preparatory school for black youth located in Sedalia, North Carolina. While in North Carolina for a two-year art residency from 1928 to 1930, she experienced firsthand the racism and discrimination that was far from foreign to the American South. Her experiences at Howard in 1930s was no better. There was time she couldn't go to places like the theater or department stores, even for her status as a noble artist. Despite the hardships she faced at home, she didn't let this hinder her dreams of becoming an esteemed artist. Lewis reencountered in a Washington Post interview in 1983 that, quote, they told me with your talent, Lewis, if you want to become a success with your career, you're going to have to go abroad, unquote. That was often the case for many black artists Leaving the country was the only way they could free themselves from the oppressive shackles of racism. Holy Jones had a very distinct art style. Taking heavy inspiration from the African traditions, Jones masterfully blended the experiences of the Black diaspora with trivial designs and culture from the motherland. Using watercolors and acrylics to illustrate said concepts into the majority of her work. Her work was a part of the movement that helped break from formal styles. La Fiche was painted in 1938 and depicted five masks, all different shapes, sizes, and colors from various African tribes and reflect the diversity and complexity of Africa. It's drawn with the expressionist style, which aims to invoke emotion. After her several tours to Africa, the Caribbean, Haiti in particular, her art began to become more and more Afrocentric. Her work shows strength, pride, protection of the African-American heritage from a society that often attempts to erase it, especially in the acquisition of fame. 
for being a woman and being a woman of color. But I kept going with, with determination. And as I look back, I wonder how I've done it. I'm an American painter who happens to be black. Even though we're still a long way to go, we can thank these black Renaissance men and women for all their contributions to our culture, making the American dream more and more achievable for all.